Now we go to the adult. The adult one, I wanted to compartmentalize it. I intentionally did it. So I'll draw something for you. So this is the back, this is the uh, piercing abdomen here like that. And the belly button is here. The cyphoid is here. Here we have one organ here. The pancreas sits here. The sigmoid sits here. And appendix sits here. So we got to label them. So this is P, pancreas. This is gallbladder, G. This is the sigmoid. And this is the appendix. For this portion, I want you to like compartmentalize it based on the location. So we start with cholecystitis. It's on the right side, okay? It's on where? On the right upper. So cholecystitis, so cholecystitis. So that's where that means inflammation of the gallbladder. There's infection of your gallbladder. Whenever there is you have inflammation, you're going to get pain. So the pain should be located where the organ is. So they have right upper quadrant pain. That's all. Right? They have infection. So you expect them to have some fever, right? Some nausea. They may vomit. And then if you check their lab, their white count may go up a little bit. That's all, right? And what it means is they have gallstone. They form a stone in the gallbladder, which block the tube. We don't have to go into detail. You block it, and then they get infection. So they have infection. So anybody who come in and select uh, ODUC, and they give you somebody with acute cholecystitis with right upper quadrant pain, that is normal. He has fever. That's normal. He has white count. That is expected. All of them is not being shot. So that's the, the classic. Since they're on the right upper, whenever the pain, the pain can radiate. The diaphragm sits here. So it can irritate the right shoulder. So this pain can go into the right shoulder. So you give you a, a, a question, he said, somebody with cholecystitis with right upper quadrant pain radiating to the right shoulder or scapula, who cares? It's a normal finding. It's unexpected. You are not being shot. That's all. The treatment for this is remove the gallbladder, so which is cholecystectomy. So cholecystectomy. It's a fancy word, but you can see colo, gallbladder, cystectomy, octomy is always removal. So we remove the gallbladder. That's all. They they can eat after surgery, uh, drink some liquid, then advance them. They have small, tiny incisions, and uh, they do it laparoscopically, so they don't have big incision. They have demobone on it. Um, they can take shower the following day, but they can take bath for 14 days and no heavy lifting, and they go home the same day. Simple as shit. Then we go down. It's on the right side, and it's lower. So where should the appendicitis? Where should your pain be? Right lower quadrant pain. That's all. Okay, they too, because they have infection, nausea, vomit, Okay. Um, and we already talked about the management of the uh, IDs in your abdomen. They are MPO, they get the IV fluid. I forget to mention it, but I mentioned it previously. So this person, MPO, IV fluid, antibiotic, and pain management. The same thing. These appendicitis, IV fluid, MPO, antibiotic, and some pain management. That's all. And they have right lower quadrant pain um, in the right lower, okay? Treatment, take away the infection. So they do to they get laparoscopic appendectomy. Remove the appendix. It's a removal of the appendix. Um, they they, they, too, they It's done laparoscopically. They go home the same day. They can start drinking. They cannot lift any weight. They can um, shower the following day. They, can, they, they cannot take bath. The wound cannot be underwater for uh, in, in six weeks. So those are the information that you need to know. That's all. That's all they will ask you. They won't ask you anything about appendicitis except where is the pain is located, right lower quadrant pain. And it's right here, right here. Okay, then we go to 
diverticulitis. Before that, I just remember something. I did this one, cholecystitis, they may ask you what causes stone, gold stone formation. It's, we call it the five Fs. Um, so usually female, they are 40, over 40 years old. They are fetal. That means they have a lot of babies, you know, um, and multiparity, okay, and you eat fatty food. So that's how you remember the risk factors for forming stone, four Fs, everything I said, female 40, fetal, multiparity, and then um, and eat fatty food. Here is the sigmoid. So your sigmoid is here. So diverticulitis. There's two, you got to know, diverticulosis versus diverticulitis. One is an infection and one is just what you have outpouching. So for this one, this is the colon, you have packets like that. You've developed packets that can perforate. So you have packets like that due to lack of fiber. So you don't eat fiber. So um, this can perforate. And when it perforates, um, you develop itis. When you have these packets, it's losses. When this perforate, it's called lidis. And so in your test, probably they want to teach you how can you prevent losses. Losses happen because you don't have fiber. Okay. So we need some fiber. So we hydrate ourselves. We exercise. And we take some fiber. And fiber, you're trying to get 30 grams of fiber a day. Hydrate, you get like two to three liters a day. And you exercise, moderate exercise. That's how you prevent losses. And if you prevent losses, you prevent itis too. So high fiber diet to prevent uh, 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 more losses formation to develop itis. If they come in, and they have itis. They have infection. It's the same thing. MPO, IV fluid, antibiotic, and pain management. You're done. Nothing go into the rectum. No. If you put anything in the rectum, you perforate them because they have inflammation. So if they trick you, you say give them an enema. Negative. No enema for diverticulitis patients. Okay, the, they can ask you, who do you see first question? Anybody who have diverticulitis, you see the pain is on the what? Left lower quadrant. If all of a sudden the pain is now here, left upper quadrant. So left lower to left upper, that means they have abscess and that's a priority patient. Once again, let me repeat it. Any patient who have diverticulitis, coming, initially their pain is on the left lower quadrant and all of a sudden it's left upper quadrant, they develop an abscess and they perforate it. And therefore that's a priority patient you got to see. Okay, the pancreas is located in the mid epigastrium. So their symptoms will be related to that location. So their symptoms will be related to where it's located. So let me clean this away. So for pancreatitis, we already know it's on the, the mid epigastrin. So they usually have a pain, epigastric pain, okay? And it can radiate to their back. This is normal finding, don't worry about it. Their amylase and lipase can be one million. I don't care. You don't need to care about it. Their love value is abnormal. Don't let them throw you off and pick it. They will give you 11,000 uh, amylase, 10,000 lipase. That is fine. normal finding of acute uh, pancreatitis. Okay. You do the same thing for the other ones. They get a IV fluid, MPO, and pain management. These people, no antibiotic. They don't need antibiotic. It's not a true infection, even though it 
they call it pancreatitis, it's just the inflammatory response of the pancreas. The pancreas is being injured. It's like a burn wound inside them. So they don't have a true infection. So they don't need antibiotic. When you give them pain medication, no meperidine. I can explain it to you. It takes a minute, but just know that I don't do that. There's a reason why we don't do them, but don't give it to them. You can give them any narcotic, but no meperidine. Okay. Um, the pancreas sec secretes fatty and lipase and amylase. So it's like 60 fibrosis. Go back to the 60 fibrosis idea. Therefore, these people, they, 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 they cannot metabolize fat. So you give them low fat diet. Unless they have enzyme, then they can eat. Their stool will be fatty. Don't be surprised. Expected finding. Okay? These patients, IV fluid, this is not a patient you give them 100 cc an hour. They may get like 250 cc ml an hour. That is normal because they need a lot of fluid. Otherwise, they get sick. Because of this fluid, they can get pulmonary complication. So don't be com don't, don't don't be surprised if you see appendix a uh, um pancreatitis patient with um ARDS. So if you see a pancreatitis patient with ARDS because acute respiratory distress syndrome because they have been exposed to too much fluid in a very short time, and so pay attention for that one. Okay, there's few complications that can happen. The pancreas, when it's inflamed, is sac uh, calcium. So they have hypocalcemia. We call it saponification. They try to form soap from the fat. So hypocalcemia. So that's normal finding to see that. Because they secret insulin to help with the metabolism of your glucose, your glucose is high. Glucose high. Okay, so those are the lab value um, I want you to pay. And that's everything about pancreatitis. Pain management, no meperidin, IV fluid, amylase and lipase is normal. They have epigastric pain, uh, low fat diet, stool is going to be fatty, give them a lot of fluid. They get complication from the fluid. They can get ARDS, which is expected. They have hypocalcemia because of this saponification, hyperglycemia, because of lack of insulin and give them low fat diet. If you know this, no pancreatitis question will beat you.